Shall we begin? Let's begin now. Hey everybody, welcome back to another Cheapo Multimeter Review. Yes, it's Cheapo time in the Cheapo Nation. Today in the hot seat, the all new PTM-19A for your Cheapo pleasure. Let's take a look. Grab this bad boy off of Amazon for uh, not a bad price, uh, the $20 range or so. Um, thing with Amazon is prices go up, prices go down. So um, caveat emptor, uh, do your due diligence and never pay too much for a cheapo multimeter. This is a smart multimeter in the sense that it is only smart. There's no manual ranging capabilities whatsoever. So if you want some sort of uh, added functionality, other than smart, this is not the meter for you. Shipped in this funky little box here. Lots of light ray action going on. There's our meter. Obviously the rest is in Chinese. Do have some basic specs on the side for the PM19A. There's two models, the 19A and the 19B. Only difference with the B is that it does capacitance. Um, I think that is the only difference. But you know what, the capacitance mode is 200 microfarad, so it's not much of a deal breaker in this case. Standard PVC cheapo test leads, nothing to get excited about. And of course we do have our little user manual of auto range digital multimeter. And it's actually just a little pull out, strictly in English. I'm not, I'm not, you know, I'm not knocking these pull outs. I think they're better than, uh, than, you know, some of these so-called manuals. At least you get to the nitty gritty, nice and fast. What are the specs? What do I need to know? That's it, that's all good stuff. Size wise, well, there you go. Um, Rich meters 406B, same size as the Habitus 118A. You can tell that the 19A is tiny in comparison. It's a little bit bigger than the 403B from Rich meters, but yet yeah, it's a small meter. For some reason, I thought this was a bigger meter. I don't know why, I just was expecting a big one, but instead I got a tiny one. That didn't sound right, did it? Of course, we have these nice soft touch buttons. Gotta love the soft touch. Rubberized boot going on here, easily comes off. And on the back, we have that tilt stand. A little bit of a pain to actually open up, but uh, once you manage to open it, yeah, you can one hand it. You can one hand this little puppy. So that's definitely not a bad thing. Such a lovely couple. 2000 count LCD display. Let's turn it on, hit that power button. Bada boom, bada bing, bada bang. And look at that angle, it kind of sucks like that, that just not good, is it? So you gotta go like this and suddenly it becomes readable, but with that tilt stand, it's a little off. A little off. Not good, not good. Oh, we do have that plastic inlay. Let's just get rid of the hat. Oh yeah. Don't know if you can see that, but it's scratched already. I took off that plastic inlay and it's already scratched. What is up with that? Oh, not good. Oh, man, makes me mad. So when you turn on by default, that's what you get. Three bars, letting you know you're in auto mode. That's it, nothing else. No manual, as I mentioned, this is all you get. Welcome back to another multimeter. Fit of the week. This week's fit, oh, it's so true. Yes, multimeters that actually don't even have a proper safety rating. Oh my God, 2000 volts, CE rated. Ah! That infamous CE rating, it's everywhere, and it means absolutely nothing. And hey, it's not just cheap meters, expensive ones too. 400 bucks, and all I get is a CE? What the? Here's a new take. Let's just not put the safety rating on at all. Ah! Independently tested third-party certification is paramount. Better yet, when they're combined together, wow, now you're talking safety. When it comes to your safety, don't settle for the CE logo. High voltage testing, mains testing, you gotta do better. This is not a rotary selector switch in the traditional sense. We have one on off button. We do have our volts ACDC, resistance, continuity, and low current milliamps. Top of the meter, we have our NCV function. In the middle, the flashlight. And on the far right, we have our hold as well as backlight. And below that in the middle here, you see that is a LED for the continuity slash NCV mode. Finally, at the bottom, we have our milliamp input. Beside that, the common or ground. Finally, on the far right, we have our voltage, resistance, and continuity. All right, let's take a look and see how good this little beast is. 
chest leads fit in just like so nice and snug like a bug on a rug something like that okay so there they are in there they're not going anywhere let's start off with a dc voltage precision all right dc 5.0 volts is what we want and 4.99 4 next up is diodes no it's not because the ptm 19a does not do diodes <laughs> oh wow let's see how it is for resistance speed 20 mega ohms is what we're looking at as the maximum for resistance okay starting off with one mega ohm and 0.997 up to three mega ohm six mega ohm and 10 mega ohm well, it's not too shabby, really. Let's try 100K. 300K. Well, I've definitely seen worse in terms of range speed. And finally, 1 mega ohm. Yeah, so all in all, not so bad for a smart meter in terms of speed of ranging. And in terms of precision on the reference side, 100 ohm is what we want. And sitting at 101, so that is not too shabby. Pretty good stuff. Definitely well within spec. Hey, it's accurate in resistance mode. According to the manual, the threshold voltage is 0.8 volts. And we're actually at 0.8 now. Uh, coming up is 0.797, but uh, we're still able to get a reading. Let's bring it down. 0.5. No, still looking good. 0 0.4, 0 0.3, 0 0.2. So it's doing better than spec in terms of giving us that low voltage reading. Now, yes, it is a smart multimeter. We're going to try continuity. Um, I'm not going to use the Pro Masters because honestly, I wouldn't really wouldn't be using continuity with a smart meter. Um, but anyway, let's try it. 0 0.50 ohm is the cutoff. Anything lower and continuity will kick in. Yeah, so if you're trying to do something scratchy, quick, latchy, you know, it's not going to happen with the PTM19A. If you just make contact, it'll take about a second or two and it'll finally kick in. And by the way, you have low resistance on those leads. So yeah, that's not bad, but crappy continuity. Sixty-nine point nine decibels, maximum output volume in continuity. Okay, AC voltage, smart meter, take us home, baby. And there we are, 120.9 volts. Beauty. Now, one particular function with the smart meter I do like is look at that. Off, on, off, on, off, and on. So it's really fast. You don't have to hold down on it for two or three seconds or, you know, start reading a Tolstoy novel before your multimeter turns on. No, it's quick. It's quick. I like that. I like quick picked up an old Toshiba calculator and it shipped with the original Toshiba batteries. These things are like, oh man, 25, 30 years old and they're still in the plastic. Cool. Hey, a big bonus with this meter is the backlight stays on. That's right, the PTM 19A, no dicking around. Turn that backlight on and it stays on. Oh, beautiful. Now I want to put it into milliamp mode. Look at that. It automatically recognizes, detects that jack input in the milliamp. Cool. So let's try that milliamp range. I know it's only 200 milliamps. It ain't a lot, but you know what? Let's try it. Also, when we're in the milliamp range, you see that LED is blinking on and off, letting us know that we are in milliamp mode. Cool. I like that. I like it. It's telling us you're in current mode. That is kind of cool. Okay, 100 milliamps is what we should be looking at. Bada boom, bada bing. 97.8 milliamps. Good stuff gonna bring it up ever so slightly 140 milliamps I'm sorry 120 milliamps coming up is 124 190 milliamps and 200 milliamps and we're over limit so yeah 200 milliamp is that cutoff threshold but it seems to recover so we might have one of those poly fuses those self-resetting fuses in the milliamp mode I hope so We'll soon find out. Maybe not. Maybe it's a crappy glass fuse. Finally, we'll take a quick look at non-contact voltage. For this meter, you actually have to hold down on that NCV button. If you let go, it takes you out of NCV mode. So NCV, hold it down, and bada boom. So we're getting a visual indicator as well as an audible, which is cool. 
So not a lot of range in that department of sensitivity, so to speak, but at least it is detecting that 120 volts. So oh, not shabby, seems to work. Well, as you can see, not a lot of functionality here, but what it does, it seems to do pretty good. Let's take a look now on the inside. Another thing I like about the smart multimeter is the fact that you have easy access to that battery housing. You just have that one little clip like so, just, just give it a little push in, bada boom, bada bing. Two AAA batteries powering this little beast. Don't have to be f fiddling around with uh, screws or nothing, just easy access to the battery housing. That's the way it should be. On the milliamp side, we have a small 250 volt, 200 milliamp, five by 20 glass fuse. Jacobins themselves are of the split variety, but look at that little circuitry going on here. That is on the milliamp, uh, low current side of things. That's how those test leads are able to be recognized uh, as being in the milliamp mode. So that is what that circuit is for. Nice high powered resistor on this motherboard. Uh, above that, we have the piezo, the buzzer. And look at that, we actually have a surface mount capacitor as well. The only surface mount component, everything else is SMD based. That is a T24C02A um, EEP ROM. That's what's storing all of the goodness for the main IC, which might be a DreamTech IC, because a lot of times these two chips talk in unison. Here we have the LED flashlight, and look at that golden bar on top. That is our NCV. So it's embedded into the PCV, PCB, but um, still rather uh, not bad, not bad. Not the most sensitive, but at least it is picking up everything that I tried. Now, one of the sour spots is because you don't have easy fuse access, you're gonna have to remove those four threaded screws and look at that, yeah, no brass threaded insert. Just go right into plastics over time. That's gonna cause a problem. Not much else going on here. Let's put it back together. I'll come back with my closing thoughts. Closing thoughts of the PTM 19A Smart Multimeter. I like it, I like it a lot. Well, you know what? Maybe not a whole lot, but I do like it. It's smart. It doesn't claim to be the end-all be-all of multimeters, but it just does what it needs to do, and it does it really well. Yes, all you manual ranging gurus need not look at this little beast because it does have nothing in terms of manual override. Now, it's strictly automatic, and that's it. Hey, it was fast to range. Had a decent set of ranges, all things considered. If you don't need the diode or capacitance, then you'd be okay, but I'm telling you, missing that diode functionality is a real sad spot does have that neat little milliamp um, alert letting you know you're in the low current mode which I think at the end of the day you know what for smart multimeters I think it's kind of a cool niche little product and if you can pick it up on the cheap not at the 40 or 50 dollars I sometimes see it going for on Amazon but if you can pick it up for a relatively decent price say 20 25 bucks it's not a bad deal the PTM 19A smart only multimeter gets a solid three out of five stars hey Thanks for watching this review, everybody. Stay safe. Till the next one, keep on testing.